Hello, my name is Gray, and my name is Crystal, and this is Fast Asian Beauties, a supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times, and I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian and this is finally relevant. We are both Asian. <laughs> So for today's episode, we will be discussing Season 2, Episode 15, Tall Tales, written by the enemy of my state, John Chavan, <laughs> and directed high. by Bradford May, who only who directed that? this one singular episode. Huh. Well, he well, made some choices. He sure made some choices. I remember pausing 10 minutes in and going, this is the third time we panned up a woman's leg, and it's been 10 minutes. This episode, lots of misogyny. Just, yeah. there's just a lot of it. Yeah. And also, like, this episode will probably, well, definitely, have a lot of discussion about Asian fetishization, even though it's not particularly present in the episode, just uh-huh. because... Uh, we named this our is whole the podcast. first time <laughs> the, that <laughs> the running gag in Supernatural bus station beauties shows up, and uh, baby girl, <laughs> we are talking about it. So, yeah, yeah, my god, yeah, why are we doing this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, who? The thing is, this is an episode that is, I guess, quite beloved. Yeah. And I remembered it fondly. I've not watched it in many a years, but I remember it fondly. Because I remembered it only as a funny episode where funny things happen. Mm-hmm. Dean drinks a purple nurple. It's he all does. very funny. But like, rewatching it now... And I was, like, I knew that the Bus Asian Beauty's line was going to be here, so I knew that that was a discussion you were going to have. Mm-hmm. But I was still expecting, like, to have a fun time, yeah. you know? Because this is a fun episode. And so watching it and being... I mean, it, it did um, extract some laughters out yeah. of me. But there are a lot of things in this episode that made me go, hmm... Well, that's yeah. not too funny. <laughs> yeah, a so, lot of things. Lots of things. I guess, like, I guess that's just what happens with episodes that are, like, created to be funny. I feel like if they're written by the supernatural writers and also written, like, 15 years ago or whatever, like, I feel like things that are meant to be funny, like, show the way that society has changed in the way that John Chaban's a terrible person very starkly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's good that society has changed yeah. and all that, but yeah, it's still, it's, it's, it saddens me that mm-hmm. I come back to this episode and it's not as fun as I remember it being like yeah. six, seven years ago. And it's not as fun as I was led to believe by... Mm-hmm the tumblr gifs or whatever it is that i know of this episode yeah. from but yeah uh crystal before this episode started what did you know about it so i knew that a lot of this episode plot would be through sam and dean retelling it to bobby i knew about dean we don't have time for your blah 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 <laughs> Which, you know, is the most important scene in Supernatural. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I knew beforehand that Busty Asian Beauties was going to make an appearance. Though, it, it only makes an audio appearance. And... Yeah. I thought we were gonna see the site. Yeah, me too. But we but didn't. No. Which, you know what? Good. <laughs> well, uh, it, it verifies my... 
thought earlier, like a thing that we discussed in a previous episode where I said like I didn't know whether it was like a John Shaban choice or mm-hmm. it was a um props department choice. Well now yeah. we know it's a John Shaban choice. Yeah. It's verbal. Alright, John. <laughs> Yeah, and then, oh, I also knew about the scene of, like, Sam tearing up and hugging that guy and being like, you're too precious for this world. God. Yeah. And also, okay, I think one main thing that I remember, um, like, I remember the, you know, the retelling of, like, Dean flirting with some woman at the bar, and I specifically remember watching a clip of that, like, on Tumblr and being like, did they seriously change the fucking actress for her when they decided that she was gonna be a classy chick, however Dean <laughs> calls her later? Like, I, don't, I remember that being, like, incredibly annoying to me. That, like, being fat or having a wide nose just makes you trashy, like, automatically, and that once she's, like, a classy chick, she's, like, thin and has, like, a tall, like, a straight nose that's, like, thinner, and I don't know, it was, ugh. So yeah, I got to see that again. Okay, so let's start with the episode. Yeah, oh, but I we should mention that the then sequence is just a compilation of Sam and Dean being mean to each other, and it is yeah. kind of funny to watch. Yeah, it's Frank War and then them calling each other names. So. Yeah. Fun stuff. Fun stuff. We start with a guy who is a professor mm-hmm. walking towards his office in the university yeah. and there's a girl who is wearing a fucking what? nightgown this is a fucking white nightgown again <laughs> she's wearing a fucking nightgown and she is like fixing herself etc when the professor comes in and asks like what are you doing here? Uh, my like my consultation hours are not open right now, so you should just come back next time. And she's like, I've been waiting for you, Professor. Don't you recognize me? And he's like, no, I absolutely do not. But, you know, she's really flirting it up. And the professor basically concedes and lets her come into his office. Also, like, um, you know, a lot of the verbal stuff, like a lot of the script that's happening is like the professor being like, oh, no, we shan't or like, you're too young, like shit like that. But like his actions, yeah. all of his demeanors are completely opposite of that. So yeah. like when I say he's saying like, she, when I say like that he's dismissing her, like he's not. He's, uh-huh. Yeah. And then they uh, hop in, and we find out that this guy is, like, a writer. He's, like, a hotshot professor. Mm-hmm. And the girl confesses that, like, I'm not really one of your students. And uh, the professor asks, then why are you here? And she just stares at him. And then, like, when she loses a bit of her courage, she goes, like, oh, maybe uh, I, I should I should just turn back. And when she does, the professor calls out to her yeah. and starts saying shit like, It's natural. You're young and wide-eyed. And I'm a fucking celebrity around <laughs> <laughs> What an asshole. Let's kill this guy and we will. Yeah. So, And he says like, you're very beautiful, but... I can't take advantage of you while, like, caressing her face. Yeah. And then he goes in for a kiss. And uh, while they're kissing, her face turns into a monster face. It turns mm-hmm. into, like, a zombie face, basically. Yeah. And when he opens his eyes, he's like, holy shit. And, yeah. yeah. And the girl's like, don't you want me anymore? Oh, and God. all that. And uh, outside, we see a janitor with an incredibly familiar yeah. face closing up the building. And as he walks out, a guy falls out of the building. It's the professor. And he falls in head first, cracks open his skull, blood, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. And 
we get the title screen. Yeah. I thought that this was a double casting thing, actually. I'd forgotten that this was Gabriel. <laughs> you didn't know? You I was didn't know like, he was gonna be here? I was like, oh, they just cast Richard Spate Jr. earlier, and, like, they cast Ty Olsen as Eli and later as Benny. And then later I was like, oh, wait, no. His mannerisms seem to, like, either Richard Spade Jr. only knows how to act in one particular way, or this is Gabriel. <laughs> Should we, do you think, shall we or shall we not talk about Sabriel this episode? <laughs> uh, I think we should. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Yeah, no, I, sorry, I'm remembering I saw a fic of, like, Sam, like, fucking the janitor or something somewhere on AO3. So, yeah, I guess I should have known that this was Gabriel earlier. <laughs> God, um, I mean, okay, here's my say real statement, okay? <laughs> Put this on the record. Uh, if you ship say real, live your life. <laughs> But also, just to make everyone aware, I have the same real tag. Like, whenever I search for fix, I have, like, a set of things that, like, I remove, you know? Like, yeah. this, like, tags that I remove or ships or warnings that I remove. And one of those things that I explicitly remove is Sam's Winchester slash Gabriel Supernatural. So... <laughs> That's that's my opinion and my hot take and also my very respectful take on the Sabriel. Yeah, I mean I haven't seen enough of them to really know where I stand, but I feel like at least when it's Sabriel as a background relationship or written by someone who mostly writes Destiel, it has a very like pair of the spares sort of feeling to it. But I'm sure there's there is actually a good Sabriel fic out there. What is this I mean, called? I'm sure. No, uh, like, let me find it. Wait, uh, you literally have one that's, like, on hand? Yeah. You're so brave. You're the Sabriel representation in this podcast. It's called... The Road Just Rolls Out Behind Me by Winter Tree. Is this, like, a Sabriel-centric story? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> Is it canon verse? Uh, it's tag canon divergence, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, generally yeah, canon yeah. verse. Well, see, we're so good at this. Um, we're catering to everyone <laughs> in <laughs> in our fan base. Wow, we have a fan base. <laughs> we do not. <laughs> we, we have an audience, <laughs> and that's it. Sabriel is so funny to me because throughout this entire episode, I was like, okay, this is the first appearance of Gabriel and Sam together on screen. And it's a Gabriel episode. And it's literally like, you look at this and you isolate it and it's like, okay, um, at the very most, like the, the person that Gabriel is most into is Dean. Yeah. The person he interacts with most is Dean. So if you're gonna ship something, like that's kind of the direction you would take, but mm -hmm. I guess not, because Sam needs an angel too. <laughs> Maybe God, in Mystery so Spot there'll be more Sabriel content. Yeah, maybe so. Like but Sam also, does like, shove season... him against a fence. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in season 13, there is Sabriel um, fan service. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do they, don't they have like a. They have a. We like need a you, I need you moment. moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. Literally, I was watching that and I was like, okay, um, sure. <laughs> He needs Gabriel, like, good for them. And it's so funny that that's, like, what pulls him out of his trance. Like, Sam being like, I need you. And, like, Gabriel has literally never cared about you. <laughs> what do you think your I need you is gonna accomplish, Sam? 
But yeah, God, yeah. we'll get to it when we get to it. Huh, it's so I guess fucking funny though. I haven't seen a lot of like Sabriel Wiener, but like it seems like that would be like a good oh. thing to explore, right? Because Gabriel and yeah. Rowena have slept together, and Sam Wiener's definitely a thing, and Sabriel's a thing. So like, get get on it, fanfic writers. Yeah. Throw Eileen in there too, just for me, just for my oh yeah, uh, pleasure. <laughs> oh God, that sounds so. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. Uh huh. Okay. Sure thing. <laughs> you know what? No. Throw Eileen in there for my pleasure too. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I miss her so much. Okay, let's start the actual episode. So true. So we're at a motel one week later. Sam's doing research, but like he doesn't have his laptop with him. And Dean is on the bed, on Sam's bed, like listening to music pretty loudly and eating. I couldn't tell what this was. This were, it was like loaded fries. Okay, yeah. Eating loaded fries. I would say bed. that in this scene, um, because we, we pan from like up above like a window mm-hmm. down to Sam and then to Dean, right? Yeah. Um in the moment in between the window and Sam, yeah. I literally was like, Is Dean having sex? <laughs> because literally moaning he's like "Mm, mm," and it's i was like i don't remember this episode starting this way and it passes out okay like dean is not having sex hopefully and we fan to dean and he's literally eating and i burst out laughing because he literally sounds like he's fucking the fries oh maybe the fries had hummus on them (laughs) i've never had hummus but i trust that it's good Oh no! I'm, there was a Reddit post about oh yeah the <laughs> Reddit <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay yeah for the uninformed there's a Reddit post about some woman who uh, thought that her son and his friend were having sex in his room, and then she went in to like I don't know stop them or something, and like and then her son was like oh no the the moaning was just because we were eating hummus, um and then. I mean, they were having sex, but she believed them because she tried the hummus for the first time, and she was like, oh my god, this is so good. Like, totally you would have made sex noises while eating hummus. No more questions asked. So yeah, that's the Reddit story. (laughs) So, yeah, so Sam's pretty annoyed at Dean. Ugh, I don't like... I don't like episodes where Sam has to be, like, a stick in the ass and Dean has to be, like, goofy or whatever. Because both of them, because, I don't know, because Dean just always comes off as more likable in those situations because they always play Sam very, like, serious. I don't know, it's annoying. Let Sam be a little shit more. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, so Sam's annoyed that Dean's eating those loaded fries on his bed. He says, you mind not eating those on my bed? And Dean goes, no, I don't mind. Uh, and He's we... slaying. <laughs> <laughs> he is living his best life. Like, later, Sam asks Dean to turn the music down, and Dean just turns it up. But yeah, we find out here that Sam's really annoyed because he doesn't know where his laptop is and seems to blame Dean for it. Um, Sam tells Dean to get the fuck out, and Dean's like, hey, like, I'd love to leave, but unfortunately, my car is completely screwed. And we find out later that all that happened was that, like, some of the air got let out of the tires, right? Like, can't you just... Like, is that not an easy fix? Like, don't you have an air pump? Well, you get the tires changed, I guess. Oh, Oh yeah. wait, so like, like, like there was like poked holes oh into. poked holes. Okay, 
I thought I thought they just opened it through a, a like section that you could reseal. Okay, I understand Dean being annoying now. Um, and Bobby shows up. Hey, and, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. And I'm like the nerve of calling him over here after born under a bad sign. Like he's he doesn't have a house anymore. You destroyed his ceiling. <laughs> And it's so, it's so funny to me that they're like, okay, we're calling you over. Yeah. And then they talk about the case. Like, they talk about it like it's super serious. And like, yeah, it's serious because people died. But like, it's, it's not your most difficult case, I feel yeah. like. Right. And they were like, we can't say this over the phone. Like, yeah, you can. You literally can. Yeah. God. Bobby's poor ceiling. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> they tell Bobby that we're working this case and it's like the wildest shit we've ever seen and we don't even think you'll believe it and we want your help. So they try to retell the story. So Sam says that they saw the news of this professor's death falling from the fourth story window in the newspaper and that there's a campus legend that that building is haunted and we get our first flashback yeah so uh they're playing with the format of this episode which i did enjoy like there's mm -hmm. you know it's it's pretty much made up of flashbacks when they stop and go no no no, no. like you know they do that whole thing and it is fun so uh, our first flashback is on Sam. Uh, so Sam is like talking to two people, like this guy who's like a frat boy. Haha, mm -hmm. -ha, I'm gonna drink. And this girl who's literally just there and I have no idea why she's hanging out with this guy. Yeah. She's so much cooler than him. He <laughs> looks like an asshole and he apparently is an asshole. Yeah. So, and he's an asshole to her. So yeah. no idea why she's here. But... Basically, like, they say that the professor is a professor of ethics and morality, which, you know. All right, bud. <laughs> okay. And uh, Sam presses on why they think the guy did it, and Jen is like, I don't know. Also, we learned he had a wife and kids. Like, fuck yeah. off, guy. <laughs> yeah, like, Jen was like, I don't know, but he had a wife and kids, and he had, like, tenure and he was like a big hot shit professor which is so <laughs> funny to me like i i understand the concept of famous academics like yeah. i know that there are famous academics but like what well, even is this university <laughs> how are there how is there like just a hot shot professor like lying around yeah. in this like university in the middle of I don't know, where was this? I don't they even don't know say, what right? state this is, no. Yeah. She says, like, oh, but maybe it's not a suicide? And Sam's like, oh, tell me more. And she elaborates that uh, in Crawford Hall, which is where uh, the guy jumped from, um, there was a girl who uh, was, like, on an affair with a professor and when the professor rejected her she jumped out of the building so now she haunts the building and she was like she jumped from room 669 <laughs> and she was like do you get it and i i, I really <laughs> thought they were gonna make a 69 yeah, jump same. but she was like no you invert the nine it becomes 666 <laughs> and i was like well that's well. <laughs> kind of funny and Sam was like, oh, okay, uh, fine, uh, that's good information, I'm gonna go leave now. And he goes to Dean, who is drinking multiple shots of this purple-blue-ish um, drinks. And he's having a lot of fun. And Sa the, Sa uh, <coughs> Sam was like, what are you drinking? What is that? And Dean says, I don't know, man. I think they're called purple nervous, which for some reason, like, this is so ingrained in my mind. And it is it is funny. Like, Dean saying purple nervous is funny, so. Yeah. 
Sam says that they need to go and look at the building, but Dean says no because I have a feisty little wildcat on the hook right now, and like I'm about to reel her in, and he's like, I'll introduce you, and lo- like Crystal said, we get our first. A le- like Second, leg shot because we get a leg shot of the like ghost zombie woman. Oh yeah, you're right. Well. So this is the second one. Uh, we get um, a pan up of this woman who's wearing like she's wearing. Well, how would you describe this? Fishnets. Well, yeah, no, but like, the... how would you describe the aesthetic? It's like kind of grunge maybe but like she's blonde so it doesn't look like it yeah blonde grunge <laughs> i can see that yeah she's a blonde grunge but you know she's you know she has like makeup on and she's wearing like a mini skirt and fishnets and dean's like oh uh starla let me introduce you to sam and uh they do the whole thing where starla is like drinking some more but she like starts about to vomit yeah but she's like no, no no i'm just holding in my liquor and for some reason dean is amused by this and dean is like oh uh sam she's got a sister which yeah. made me so un- yeah. yeah and this isn't so the first time that dean like dean does this a lot right like he finds women and then he tries to get their friends or their sisters to hook up with sam like yeah, wha- like why? It looks stupid. Like ew. Yeah, it's you know what. My first instinct when this happened was like, oh my god, he's suggesting a foursome, and then oh, like god. I was like, oh, and then I was like, okay, maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> maybe no, not. it's like, like separate but, like, rooms. Yeah, but. I don't think that's such a far off thing to think, given the fact that Supernatural does a lot of like twins yeah. <laughs> situation. Yeah, like, they love yeah. that. Like yeah. Dean is like, I fuck twins, and that is like honestly, that's genuinely fucking disgusting. It is. Like, why does Supernatural keep doing this? I, oh my god. Yeah, I don't know why Supernatural thinks that's okay. Like, oh, like you don't, like, no. Like, if you're related to someone, you shouldn't be in a sexual situation with them regardless <laughs> of whether or not you're touching. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 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 It's just, because it is also part of, like, like, the twins is, like, a fetish thing, too, right? Yeah. And it's, like, a... It's, like, demonizing, because... Yeah, I mean... Right, because we, we'll you're talk about acting like they're about... just two versions of the same person there to service you. Yeah, it's... It's wild. Mm. Uh, at this point, this scene stops, and you hear Dean interject and say, like, No! I... Um, that's not how it happened. And Sam was like, oh, you didn't drink the purple nervous? And Dean was like, no, I, I drank the purple nervous. But her name wasn't Starla. And Sam presses and Dean's like, well, I don't remember her name. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and, uh, Dean says, like, she wasn't, uh... <laughs> well, what did he say? I don't want to say anything bad. Oh, he says, she was a classy chick. She was a grad student anthropology and folklore we were talking about a local ghost stories yeah and then- <laughs> we cut to them not talking about local ghost stories <laughs> right we get the third fucking pan up from a woman's legs it's been 10 minutes oh my god so yeah uh like this time it's like Oh, like, she's classy because, like, she has opaque stockings instead of fishnets and her skirt starts lower. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah. Also, I just want to say, like, it's so wild to me that Mr. I Will Never Disrespect Women, Sam Winchester, it's like, 
he's portrayed as like being terrible to the woman he was describing. You yeah. Know? Like, I mean, how would he even describe that situation? What would he say for De- for to elicit that kind of reaction from Dean? Ah. Uh. Like, he would he be like, Dean was with a trashy woman. Like, <laughs> Dean was with what? a trollop. <laughs> like, I was. <laughs> yeah, I Dean don't... was with a blonde goth <laughs> chick. She's not even goth. Like, she didn't have any. She's like... grunge. I'm yeah. sorry. I, she she yeah. was with a. He was with a blonde, blonde. grunge chick. Because I feel like the things that would be in character for Sam to point out is, like, maybe like that she was, like, sloppily drunk or, like, almost throwing up. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, you know, given the change in actors, like, yeah. did he also say, like, oh, she was, like, a bit chubby. And, you know, yeah. I didn't actually even notice that she was chubby. And it's, like... Like it's something that you pointed out, and now I'm like, oh yeah, they're doing they're doing that. Like uh-huh. she has like a wider face, yeah. and uh, she's like, yeah, Ugh. yeah. <laughs> oh god, yeah. I don't. Yeah. Why are they doing this to Sam? Why are they painting Sam as a misogynist? Come on, should we give should him we give a him point? a point? Yeah, I think let's let's throw one in there. Yeah. All right. Sam gets a misogyny point, and it's his first one of the season. Wow. Wow, Sam. And, okay, and should we preemptively give Dean a point for, like, how he tells this rest of the story? Or <laughs> we'll get to it. Let's, let's tell the story, and yeah. then let's evaluate. Okay. So, yeah, this is a different actress, and she, I think they have it so that her makeup is, she has more expensive makeup on, I think. Like, it looks less caked or whatever. And, like, they've cast, like, a different woman who's thinner and her nose isn't as flat. And she's wearing this, like, fancy black dress, sort of like Sarah's outfit when we first yeah. meet her. Uh, and also, doesn't Bella wear a very similar black dress later, too? Yeah, this is how they show wealth, I guess. Like, yeah. a little black dress. Yeah. Uh, so... So they're toasting. And, like, they're going, like, here's to us. And then she goes, like, my god, you are attractive. I can't even concentrate. It's like... Staring Looking into the sun. <laughs> ah! I just... I love how Dean was like, you're painting me in such a bad light and this girl in such a bad light. And like, she looks... She's way worse in this one. And Dean looks way worse in this scene, too. <laughs> God. Yeah. yeah, Dean goes like, there's no time for that. You have to tell me about this urban legend, please. Lives are at stake. Um, but yeah, since sh- she's staring into the sun, um, she starts kissing him. And I go, oh my god, I recognize this because this is the half of the, the Desiel Manip kiss gif. This is the Dean <laughs> half of it. Have you, you know which one I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. You are absolutely right. Like Right, I was like, why is this so Oh my god, it's him. And the other half is cast with fucking April and I'm no angel. So yeah. Wait. Uh I I cause there's also one where it's like the anarchist, right? I think yeah, I think yeah. there's another... There's several Dusty Elmanip kisses, but I think, like, the one that people use the most has this as It's Dean's from hat. this one. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> I, honestly, I love people who, like, edit, like, 
scenes to yeah. make it look like Nestle or fucking or like edit yeah um, like gifs to make it look like they're kissing like literally it's so important. go you it's so fucking funny you know yeah, have you watched that one like trailer thing Oh, the, the profound like, bound where Dean's an FBI profound guy. Profound bond, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Cass is his new Cass angel is like partner. an angel, yeah. And they, they do this scene, like, right smack in the middle where they put, like, the <laughs> the the Cassie Dean sex scene and they pretend it's, like, <laughs> And they also put, like, a random ass, like, two guys kissing scene. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I love it so much. Yeah. Same. Truly art of our generation. Yeah. Like, put that shit in the MoMA. <laughs> yeah. So, while they're making out, Sam... <laughs> Sam shows up! And he's like... God, he's he's look, he's great. Like, he has, I guess what most people call, like, the Sam Bish face on, but, like, yeah. it's a lot more pinched than usual. He has, like, a jacket slung over his shoulder, and he's sort of holding it, and he he's like, Dean, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> or, I don't know how he to speaks. say it right. Do you know how to yeah. say it right? I'll, I'll try, I'll try. Okay. Dean... What do you think? No, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, you got it. I can't do it. Well, it sounds it sounds very exaggerated and yeah, uh, like he's like you know very uptight. Uh huh. Yeah, and Dean like tells him like, "Oh, just give me five minutes here." What is Dean gonna do in five minutes? <laughs> <laughs> That's how long it takes for him to finish. <laughs> So true. So, Sam goes in the same voice. Dean, this is a very serious investigation. We don't have any time for any of your blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. And then, like, Dean's, like, making so out true. with this girl. And Sam continues going, like, blah. So true. Okay, wait. So, do we think that Dean's portrayal of this woman whose name may or may not be Starla was misogynistic? Yes. Yes. Okay, so let's give him another point. So this is I can't tenth. believe this is how super... Oh, wait, how many has he asked now? This is his tenth. Ugh. Well, I can't just... I can't... Like, because... Basically, this is like supernatural being like, this is how Sam views women. Yeah. And this is how Dean views women. And like, for Dean, oh, well, specifically the women that hook up with Dean. And like, mm -hmm. for Dean, he views them as like so into him and like giving him so much validation. Yeah. And I guess that's in line. Let's say that it's true that Dean is with a classy woman who is a grad student of anthropology and folklore. Like, that would make Sam's vision, Sam's, like, flashback incredibly, like, very demeaning yeah. for, like, like, the implication that Sam thinks of the women that Dean's, that would specifically go for Dean or Dean would go for to be, like, you know, like, these, like, trashy like how supernatural portrays trashy women mm -hmm. it's like okay well these two are fucking assholes yeah <laughs> so yeah uh yeah do you think that's like a result of sam i do wonder this like do you think sam is the type of person who would go for like someone he deems less intellectual or something like that i don't really know how to word it not like intellect but like a class thing but that doesn't make sense because sam is fucking poor so yeah. it's not like it would be incredibly hypocritical of him to be like well i'm not gonna go for a girl who's um like a lower class citizen because uh like he is one himself but also like I do see, like, Sam being a bit uptight with regards to, like, 
can we be in the same wavelength? Or like at least at this point in the show, that's the implication. Because the only woman that he has really... Well, that's not true. He was with Laurie. Yeah. But the, like other than that, it's just Sarah. And Sarah is portrayed as like very smart and mm-hmm. all that shit. So I do wonder if this is like the show trying to tell us that, like that Sam is not, like he he like because the way he's portrayed is like he looks disgusted when Dino's like she has a sister and you can interpret that many ways like what Dean is doing is very disgusting or uh-huh. is true but it can also be like I'm not gonna go for a girl like a girl who's like that yeah it's just something like. It's just something I thought about. I well, the things I feel like the main thing with Sam is that we don't really see him have casual sex or seek out casual sex. So, I think he generally like only goes for girls who are on the same wavelength, like as him, or like that he feels like he can have a conversation with. Though, I mean, he was not giving Sarah anything on that date. He was not having a conversation. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like. I feel like he has different. St- okay, I think that because of, he's he's probably honestly a little bit judgmental of Dean for having <laughs> yes. casual sex, and he's judgmental of women who have casual sex with Dean. Like I okay, honestly, honestly, I think Sam's Catholic enough to be like, <laughs> you can't have meaningless sex. Like you have to love each other in front of God. <laughs> 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 That's what I think is going God. on. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I, I get that, and yeah, you're. That makes sense. But yeah, <laughs> I think the only time we see Sam have casual sex is like soulless Sam. Soulless Sam, and also in Baby, he has sex with a waitress at the back seat but like after that this, him and Dean had this whole conversation where he was like I tried to give her my number but <laughs> she didn't accept <laughs> what a loser sorry wait God, I'm just I just remembering that time Dean's like the last time I took you to a strip club you tried to get the girl to go to nursing <laughs> school <laughs> he was gonna go to Clam Dive because it has great reviews. <laughs> <sighs> oh my god. He's an icon. <laughs> yeah. No, but honestly, yeah, I feel like Sam's someone who thinks that, who kind of views casual sex as demeaning. I think that's the situation. Yeah, I, I see that. <laughs> Like, just let, let this woman who works as a stripper do her job. <laughs> like, stop Literally. it. Literally. Oh. Anyway, so we cut back, and Sam's like, yeah, no, that's not what fucking happened, and I don't sound like that. And he goes like, that's what you sound like to me. So, oh, God. I don't- I feel like the next lines are too- they're not Wincest fan service, but I- I don't like lines in Supernatural where, like, I can think very quickly, oh, I bet the Wincesties loved that one. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, so- I think the Wincesties did love this episode, for real. Yeah. So, yeah, Bobby says that they're bickering like an old married couple- and Dean says, no, married couples can get divorced. Me and him were like Siamese twins. <laughs> <laughs> it's conjoined twins! <laughs> and, like, they're trying to portray... I don't know who they're trying to portray in the bad light, but in general, it's like, look, Sam's so politically correct. Or, like, whatever. Right? Like, that's what they're going for. <laughs> It's conjoined twins. <laughs> it is a literally conjoined twin. God. God, yeah, I... It's... 
I I don't I didn't know think the, this scene was funny. It was <laughs> what, the, what did the you think of it? The funniest thing ever. Especially because I knew that this was going to be the Bastiation Beauties episode. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no. So, like, John Chaban was literally like, oh, like, let's specifically throw in Sam being against, like, Asian-directed racism. But, like... <laughs> In the oh. way. Oh god, I don't even know what's so funny about this, but it is so funny. But not for the reasons John Chaban thought it was funny. I think it's funny because the way a lot of the arguments that they have this episode are portrayed as like, I've said this to you before, uh-huh. you know? So like, just the idea of Sam being like in the past, like... No, 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 Dean, it's conjoined twins. And Dean be like, okay. And then now be like, it's Cyrus twins. And Sam be like, I already fucking told you. It's conjoined twins. Like, I don't know. I thought I thought it was, the delivery was yeah. funny. And like, the timing was actually funny. It was. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, both of them are very annoyed at each other. And then... Like, Molly's like, okay, fine, whatever, you're arguing. And then Sam says that they went to check out the building to see what the haunting situation is. Yeah, like, at some point, Dean says, like, it's just tight quarters. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, don't worry about it. And it's like, now I'm imagining, like, um, the, like, being with, I'll choose one of my sisters, right? Yeah. Like, if I, me and one of my sisters... We're in a car together. I literally think we would kill each other. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> For that long, like, I would have road trips with my family where it's like all of us uh-huh. in a car. And you hate each other. <laughs> literally. Like, you're like, it sucks. And like, knowing Sam and Dean, they drive for even longer mm-hmm. than like the four-hour trip that it takes for my family to go, like, somewhere. Somewhere. But, like, thinking that, like, they would spend, like, 17 hours on the road, like, no wonder you guys hate each other. Yeah. That one post that's, like, people who think that Sam and, uh, like, people who think that Sam and Dean are wrong for wanting to kill each other have never been in a car ride with their siblings. (laughs) Like, so true. Yeah. Literally. And they're always in the same motel room, too. Like, there's no fucking escape. Yeah. Literally, get separate motel rooms. Is that more expensive? Maybe yeah, that's it is why. more like, expensive. It's more expensive. Yeah. But. So I guess they don't God. feel like it's worth it to, like, do that unless, like, one of them is bringing somebody back to the room. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they should all, they should both pretend that they're having hookups so that they can get separate rooms. (laughs) So true. It's just, like, what do you think, what is your proposed solution to this problem of Sam and Dean spend so much time together? I mean, let Sam quit hunting. (laughs) I think, well, Sam is in a weird position right now. So I don't think he's gonna quit hunting. Yeah. But like an immediate solution I can think of is get some a fucking car. And like yeah. let him just tail you. It's double the gas, yes, but I mean gas was cheaper at this at this point it, in yeah, history. Oh my I feel god. Like. <laughs> Boy was gas cheaper at that point in oh time. Oh my god. But and also like Bobby literally has a garage yeah. full of cars. Yeah, like, Sam could have they any can of those literally cars. Pick one. Let Sam have that rusty ass. Yeah, band the that soccer they had mom in fan. Episode two. Literally, he would enjoy it. Yeah, he would. Sam could hotbox the soccer mom van. I think it would do him good. <laughs> literally, and it's just, it makes me so sad to think that like Sam is stuck in that car and Dean is the only one who has any control on the music yeah. and Sam's just sitting on the passenger seat and it's like 
Do you know how annoying it is to listen to someone else's music? Yeah, like for it's ten hours a day. Like, like, uh, when, like, I mean, you know this, but like sometimes I share a room with my sister when my other sister comes home, mm-hmm. and she literally does not use earphones for anything. So she would like listen to fucking, you know, those like true crime mukbangs where like. Oh like, my god. Stephanie Sue would like do a mukbang and all throughout it she's like telling a story about a true crime and I would literally like light on my bed, full blast my music in my earphones and be like, I'm not listening to that. Yeah. <laughs> Happy for you or sorry that happened. <laughs> and it's so annoying and I literally do sometimes like I wish I could commit atrocities, <laughs> but <laughs> um, you know, yeah. life <laughs> We we shall not commit atrocities. Like literally, it's so miserable. Yeah, and I I feel for Sam. And sorry that your life is like this, my dude. Yeah, right. Because they're portraying him as being like way too uptight and unreasonable in this episode. Every time he's annoyed at Dean, but if you think about the reality of the situation, like yeah, in fact, he should have done a murder by now. <laughs> literally, should have done a murder by now. So Sam and Dean go to the professor's office and they are let in by the janitor, aka the trickster, aka Gabriel. And Sam interviews him a little bit. He's been working here for six years and uh, Sam literally just pulls out an EMF. And, uh, like, they're posing as electrician, so he's like, I'm trying to find, like, an electric wire in the walls, which is so stupid! It's so stupid! Uh, and the janitor is like, oh, well, I don't know why you're doing this, the professor died, so he's not gonna be using this room anymore, and, um, he's like, oh, what happened? And Sam and looks the so really thrilled. S- Sam is so <laughs> fucking excited about this murder. You know what? This entire time, I was waiting for Gabriel to like look at Sam at any single <laughs> moment, and it never happens. <laughs> Sorry, Sabriel. <laughs> Sorry, Sabriel Thruters. But yeah, he he relates what happened, and uh, he relates that when the uh, when the professor was coming up, he wasn't alone, but he didn't see anyone exit with the professor. Sorry. Oh, by the way, all throughout this, Dean is like picking up food from somewhere. I'm sorry, and... I'm reading the transcript and it says Dean comes into frame, his cheeks stuffed with nuts. Good for him. <laughs> Literally stuff your cheeks with nuts, baby boy. (laughs) Any cheeks that you have on you, stuff them with nuts. Uh, He literally looks like a chipmunk. Like, you know, just cheeks out and he's still putting in more. And like, Dean in voiceover goes, I didn't eat all of that. And Sam's like, just let me tell the story, okay? So they continue this story with Dean's cheeks of fully puffed out by the food and the janitor basically relays that uh the professor this was not his first rendezvous with a female student like he brings a lot of girls up into his office yeah at some point he says like he got more ass than a toilet and dean like laughs so hard (laughs) d-real anyway um Sam also asked about room 669, but the the building only has four floors, so this cannot possibly be real. Okay, so yeah, they go, so after that they head back to the hotel, and yeah, they don't really know what the situation is, but they should check on the story about the girl jumping out of the window in the past. And now, okay, (laughs) okay, we're here. So Sam opens his laptop and he goes like, were you on my computer? Because like, it's frozen now on bustyasianbeauties.com. 
<laughs> okay. So, yeah. This is like this is a pretty like fleeting mention, but it definitely it starts a trend throughout the show. Yeah. So we are gonna like talk about it in depth here. I would say Bust Asian Beauties is the longest and biggest running gag in the show. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this is gonna be quite long. Well, I mean, who cares? Strap in though. <laughs> We're gonna have a discussion about Asian fetishization. Yeah. Oh god, how do we start? We have our Google Doc, but I don't know who's starting. <laughs> you can start. Okay. Yeah. Just... Um. So, Asian fetishization is a pretty common thing in the West. Uh, and. Generally, like, most of the literature out there and most of the anecdotal evidence out there is more about East Asian and Southeast Asian women, like, so, like, generally when people talk about Asian fetishes or yellow fever, like, it's about that. There are, like, different issues that other, like, Asian groups face. But, yeah, so, generally, white people have fetishes for Asian women where, like, the traits that they generally think are common to all Asian women or find attractive in Asian women are, like, ideas that they're docile or submissive, but, like, really good at sex. Uh, there's, like, stereotypes about, like, I think Asian women having, like, really tight vaginas or something. Um... And then, like, the physical traits that they often hone in on are, like, like daintiness or pale skin and, uh, like, things that sort of verge on, like, being attracted to, like, hairlessness and things that are more common with, like, prepubescent women. So, yeah, that's, like, generally what the fetish is. I would say that leans more on the East Asian yeah. side. In the Southeast Asian side, like it leans more on the exoticism, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, this is an exotic woman who can do exotic things. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, let's let's do a little um, view on the history of why this is like. Why is Asian fetishism a thing? Mm-hmm. It all comes back down to imperialism, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is where it all comes back to, and um, I'm using like broad terms here, like the West, the East, but basically, like I'm talking like white European and later on like white American and American people um, view like Asian people. As like some a conquest, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, there's a lot of instances of military attacks and conquest in the Asian geographical area, and with war, there usually comes a lot of like violence against women specifically, because women are seen as spoils of war, and women as are seen as like the reward in a way mm-hmm. for like men who go and conquer places so the idea of you know uh violence against women and rape and imperialism all go hand in hand and this is further exacerbated by a lot of colonialism being based on the idea that like uh, the white man is helping uncivilized people Mm -hmm. so they it it comes off from that idea too like we're actually doing these people a favor by doing these things to them yeah and um yeah a lot of this like basically a lot of like american and like western anxieties about uh military power in japan and other parts of east asia Um, Like, as a reaction to that, there was, like, this feminization of the East where, uh, like, in order to feel like they could conquer it more easily, 
uh, they, like, emasculated Asian men, which actually, like, led to, like, a new wave of homophobia in China, like, because they were like, we have to show that we're not sissies. But anyway, like, back to the general thing. Um, yeah, so emasculation of Asian men, and then, like, over-sexualization of Asian women, because, as you mentioned, like, women are considered spoils of war, like, dominating a woman, like, in Asia through rape or through, like, some kind of consensual sexual intercourse is considered, like, domination of, like, the men who, like, own her or whatever. I mean, you yeah. you see, yeah, you see the con this, like, concept in, like, the, like, I'm gonna fuck your wife jokes too, right? Like, that's the, the way you show your dominance over, like, an enemy force. Uh, yeah, you use your women. Yeah. There are a lot of examples of this throughout history. For example, in World War II, uh, like, I feel like we've all heard about, like, Japanese comfort women, which was when the Japanese army would either, like, deceive women and girls into, like, joining brothels or, like, literally kidnap them from their homes. And these were, like, they could be, like, like 13-year-olds, you know? Um, and, like, force them to provide sexual services to Japanese soldiers. Um, what isn't mentioned as much is that, like, U.S. soldiers in the area also, like, used these stations, like, they would pay to rape these women as well. Um, and, like, there's, like, in general, there has been, like, a lot of, like, thriving sex industries with, like, people who were, like, coerced into being there that are, like, still near military bases today. And, I mean, yeah, so, like, a lot of that shaped, like, that shaped, like, Western perceptions of Asian women as, like, always being willing, like, and it also, people were also more willing to do those things because of previous conceptions of Asian women that were formed through, like, like, literature. Yeah, like, for example, like, in, I guess, the United States, one of the most prominent portrayals of geisha culture in uh, Japan is the book Memoirs of a Geisha, which is a book that was written by a white man. And the, the research that he did on the book was he interviewed this woman who worked as a geisha in Japan. And she actually sued him. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she sued him for breach of contract and defamation of character. Even in media portrayal, like for example, in movies or television, there's a lot of portrayal of Asian women being like submissive or such. For like a very specific um, thing that's happening is, for example portrayal of robots mm. as like specifically asian like asian women so, uh, at the top of my head like ex machina does this where an asian woman is a robot and she is basically like she has no lines and she's used for sex and for services meanwhile like another robot that is a white woman actually has agency and shit mm. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. And also, back to your point about, like, like white people viewing themselves as civilized and viewing themselves, like, like going after Asian women as, like, civilizing the uncivilized. I think we see this in, like, Madama Butterfly and, like, Miss Saigon, which is based off of that, where it's, like, oh, like, this, like, poor, like, languishing Asian woman, like... Like, once, like, she's in such a bad situation, and then this white soldier, like, comes over and, like, saves her for a little bit, and then he abandons her and she kills herself. <laughs> like, it's... Yeah. What a narrative. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, and, okay, yeah, so Miss Saigon is set in, like, during the Vietnam War, 
during which there were, like, a lot of relations between American soldiers stationed there and Vietnamese women. And, you know, like, I'm sure, like, some of it was consensual, but, you know, like, the, the power dynamic of you being, like, a white soldier stationed in this country where, like, you know you could, like, do anything you want to these people and, like, the courts are yes. not gonna go after you for it, um, is just, it's not good. Um, and yeah, I think this is where I'm gonna recommend When Heaven and Earth Changed Places, which is a memoir written by a woman who was, like, around during the Vietnam War, and there's a movie called Heaven and Earth that's based off of it, which I watched in class and I thought it was, like, pretty good. Um, it's just about her experience. It's like a semi-autobiographical thing about her experience during the Vietnam War, where she does end up, like, marrying an American military contractor. And it doesn't deal, like, directly with Asian fetishes, but I think it gives you a good idea of sort of the environment that these women were during the time, and the ways that even a relationship that seems like it's good and is, like, saving you from this war-torn country can, like, be very bad for you as well. I mean, so, like, all of this has had lasting effects. Um, also going back to sort of before all this wartime stuff, um, something that people don't know about very much in U.S. history is that before the Chinese Exclusion Act, there was the Page Act of 1875, which was a reaction to Chinese immigration into the U.S., but specifically, like, immigration of Chinese women. Uh, I think the text of the act itself was just, like, don't let, like, undesirable immigrants in, and that's defined as... The only part of that definition that got enforced was, like, East Asian women who they suspect were coming over to do sex work. And, I mean, this was sort of just based off of the idea that, like, the Chinese women coming over were immoral, they were going to, like, lead white men into sin. There was also, like, people saying that they carried, like, different germs and diseases that, like, could, like, infect the American population. I don't know, the, the whole process of, like, inspecting a woman to make sure she wasn't coming over to work as a, like, sex worker was, like, extremely invasive. Um, and they didn't, they basically didn't let anyone in. And I think that, I think this shows both, like, the already existing concepts that, like, these exotic Asian women were, like, super sexual and we're like just here for you to do whatever you want with them yeah like it shows you that th like the way asian women are treated is bad both for outside of the u.s mm -hmm. and inside of the u.s yeah which is a trend that is still present to this day uh a few examples of this, like, continuing into the modern day that you could see is, for example, I know there have been studies that have shown that, what, like, one-third of, like, porn in the torture category features, like, a white man torturing an Asian woman, uh, there, and, like, there's, like, a really big sex tourism industry in some Asian countries, such as Thailand, um, so, like, there are, like, white men from the West, like, going there to have sex with, like, people who might have been coerced into being there, might be underage, etc. Um, and, like, yeah, generally, like, the idea that Asian women are submissive, you can do anything to them, and, like, that's why they're attractive, has also shown up in, like, some studies done on dating apps that show that, like, basically every race of man besides Asian men 
like have like a marked preference for swiping yes on Asian women. And then obviously I think the most recent like big thing about this was the shooting in Atlanta in 2021 of like several people at Asian owned massage parlors specifically done by a man who said that he was doing it because he had like a sex addiction that went against his religion and this was his way of fucking coping with that I guess like I don't think that it's a coincidence that he was targeting like Asian massage parlors especially because he's mentioned that in the past he's gone to massage parlors for like sex when he was like breaking his like celibacy or whatever and like a lot of these massage parlors are operated by Asian people and like involve like sexual favors to wrap this up um i want to talk about the not as recent as 2021 but this was from 2014 it was a case in the philippines where a u.s marine soldier uh murdered a filipino trans woman uh who he was having sex with and it's a very significant case because it was the first homicide case that was actually, you know, pushed through and a guy was convicted for. Uh, I mean, uh, like an American soldier, U.S. Yeah. soldier was convicted for after, like, a visiting forces agreement was signed, like, back in 1998. And the agreement basically is that, like, uh, soldiers can come into the Philippines and American soldiers can come into the Philippines and do uh, trust exercises with our soldiers from the Philippines and all that, which, you know, is a sign of U.S. imperialism that overall uh, the case was very significant for many reasons, including that and also the fact that uh, Jennifer Laude was a trans woman, and the guy like used that fact to lower his sentence from murder to homicide, and all that. But basically, he was convicted. But uh, last year, or was it twenty twenty? But uh, pandemic era, he was released by our government, and. Of course, they don't say this explicitly, but everyone knows that he was released because it's a good bargaining chip. Because, you know, pandemic time is very difficult. We need those vaccines, I guess. Uh, let's let the American man out. And also, like, throughout this entire process of getting this guy convicted, uh, the U.S. did not want to give him up at all. And it was like, a real battle to get him convicted so the fact that um, it was like he was just given up back to the United States that's the reality of the situation like imperialism colonialism neo-colonialism sexism racism these are all tied up together and these are not things that we can extract from each other yeah and Asian fetishism. Oh, is that a term? Sure. Asian fetishism adds on to that, like, contributes to that and is caused by that. So, yeah. yeah. It's a complicated topic and we've talked for a while, but we will still be linking some things in the description if you want to read more stuff about this. Yeah. Um, it's just a conversation we wanted to have, especially with the title of our podcast. Yeah. And yeah, oh, and I guess just to to mention one more thing, if you guys are like, how is like you've gone like way too far from the topic? How's this related to Dean's Asian fetish? Remember when John Winchester volunteered to fight in the Vietnam <laughs> War? <laughs> Because I just, yeah, like, like when we're talking about, like, these atrocities and, like, these stereotypes coming from, like, U.S. involvement, U.S. military involvement in Asia, like, John Winchester in the world of Supernatural was part of that. 
he either did those things or was friends with people who did those things. And also, like, Sam and Dean were both born pretty close to the Vietnam War era as well. So, like, if you think that John wouldn't have passed those ideas down or that the general environment they grew up in wouldn't have passed those ideas down, like, you're wrong. Like, yeah, no, this is, like, really directly related to, like, Dean's Asian fetish, actually. Yeah. Uh, A a couple episodes back, you, Crystal, you said, Mm -hmm. like, I wonder, like, where did Dean get these ideas of Asian fetishization? I wonder what kind of magazines John had under his bed. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so... Alright. <laughs> Back to Back the... To the otherwise completely free of misogyny. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, this episode is so... Yeah. Okay, so... Um, yeah, okay, I think, okay, the scene ends with, like, Sam telling Dean not to touch his stuff anymore. Dean says, why don't you control your OCD? Which, you know, is... Love that. Love that. (laughs) But also, you know what, taking this as canon proof, like, good for Sam, thanks for the rep. (laughs) Go, Sam. Anyway, uh, Bobby... Back in the motel, in real time now, Bobby is asking the boys, like, well, did you dig up any lore on the building? And Dean's like, well, no, it's not the building. It's not haunted. But um, we're not really sure what it is. It's weird. And then Dean relays that this part of the story, they didn't see themselves, but apparently it happened. And it's pretty weird even for them and we see in a flashback the guy who was drinking with the girl earlier the frat boy Mm -hmm. his name is curtis and he's walking in front of crawford hall which is the building where the guy jumped off and uh he hears a noise gets scared the whole thing when suddenly there's a bright light over him you know like we've all seen ufo blah 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 this is that like there's a ufo above him and it's taking him and he's levitating off the ground so yeah bobby is like you've got fucking aliens and uh, they do this whole thing where Bobby is like, well, if there's fucking aliens, they're not coming here to get people. Which, th- this suggests that they do believe in aliens, right? They just don't believe that aliens yeah, abduct are people. like your television angels. Like, television aliens. Yeah. But they did talk to the guy, and ugh. This is how the conversation yeah. goes. The guy is in a table he's drinking he's taking some shots dean cracks a joke that you should get the purple nerfle snacks and sam is doing his little oh my god poor you this is my empathy face face and they ask what happened and curtis was like nobody believes me but what happened is i blacked out and then when i woke up I don't know where I was, but there were aliens, and they did tests on him, and then um, they probed him, and at this moment, Sam Sam specifically starts kind of laughing. Mm. He's, uh, he's, He's very amused by the situation, and Curtis keeps on going, and is like, Oh, they probed me and again and again and again and it was a whole thing uh-huh. like Dean Dean actually is a bit more serious yeah. more because of shock I guess than because of actual like he's taking this guy seriously yeah. Dean is uh, Sam is full on laughing <laughs> well he's not full on laughing he's trying not to laugh uh-huh. but um 
you could see him like going back and forth between oh this is so funny and like I have to put on my empathy face yeah. and you want to talk about this now or should I finish the story first uh, we could talk about it now okay that that was sexual assault and it's not funny. <laughs> was that all? Was that the thing we were supposed to talk Literally, about? Literally, that's all we have to say about it. Like, it's because even if you don't think the guy actually experienced this, you can see it in him that he is upset. Yeah, and and he believes he experienced. He does believe this. it yeah. happened to him, and it's like. I don't know, it's just... I don't like the way Sam is portrayed this episode. Yeah. He is such an asshole. Well, Dean's about to be uh, an asshole as well in his next line. The next line is um, Curtis saying, but it got worse, and Dean saying, how could it get worse? Uh, an alien made you his bitch. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Dean. What is that? Dean. These guys are horrible. Yeah, I... <laughs> It's, oh god! Like I mean, I don't. I don't think we even need to get into it. It's obvious the layers of shittiness that yeah. line was. Yeah. yeah, and um, Curtis basically was like, they made me slow dance, and then we get an extended shot, I guess, of this alien and Curtis slow dancing over like a slow song. This comes on a little bit later, but um, when Gabriel was talking to Dean. And Dean was like, you're mad after my own heart. Those those aliens. And it's like, dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I just I just can't. Like, both of them are fully aware. Like, Dean's line makes it clear that he's fully aware that this was, like, a sexual assault situation. And he was like, it's funny because you're a man and you got sexually assaulted. You know? Like, uh. Yeah. It's truly an episode. What an episode! So we're back to, like, Sam and Dean and Bobby. And Bobby goes, like, you guys are exaggerating again. And, like, in unison, they say no. <laughs> Which would be funny if, you know, that hadn't just happened. And so... Dean says that they're, like, pretty sure that there's some evidence that this frat boy story actually happened because they see that there is, like, this big scorch mark on the college grounds and it's, like, a perfect circle. Yeah, so they think that, huh, something weird is going on here. And, but we don't know what the connection is. Also, Dean calls the the alien a sexed up ET. I it's just so weird that they keep emphasizing the fact that it was sexual assault and that's supposed to be funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. All right. So they start talking to some other college student. And I was like, this guy looks familiar. Was he in another episode of Supernatural? But no, he's just familiar from the gift sets of, like, this scene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so this is, like, another frat boy who was in the same house as Curtis. And, um, they're asking him about it. And then you, and then you realize that this is Dean telling the story because Sam starts making this, like exaggeratedly sympathetic face and he's like look man I know this all has to be so hard but I want you to know I'm here for you you brave little soldier I acknowledge your pain I acknowledge your pain <laughs> and then he starts hugging the guy and going like you're too precious for this world and the guy looks really uncomfortable and <sighs> Honestly, it's yeah. Kind of Sam weird. says. <laughs> Sam says I never said that, and Dean says you're always saying fancy stuff like that. homophobia tab time. Okay, this literally 
This episode is literally... You know that one post that's like, watching a House MD episode is like, you're either enjoying it a pretty good episode for 45 minutes, or you feel like you're an accomplice to a hate crime. <laughs> yeah. This is literally what this episode feels that like. That is so accurate. Yeah, so I am giving Dana homophobia a point for that. So that's two points. I just, They were really just letting this man say slurs. <laughs> Wild. Wild. <laughs> Absolutely wild. Ew. Oh god, I screamed out loud. Like, I don't know. Just every time. <laughs> it's so... Such <sighs> man really just wrote all of this and was like, that's funny. Air it. This is literally... John. John Chavan. Yeah. But also, I mean, it's kind of... It is interesting that this is Dean's perspective because really when sam's interviewing a suspect the only difference between him and dean is that he tries to put on a sympathetic face right yeah and dean's viewing yeah. this as like he thinks that that's so extreme and also gay <laughs> <laughs> yeah right and I'm, but, yeah every time yeah. sam probably tries to tell dean something that sounds sort of like i acknowledge your pain dean's automatic thing is like wow that's so gay of you sam like sh sh okay dean um so what we learn from the student is that curtis was the pledge master of the frat and that the hazing rituals there were like really bad and i mean i think the episode sort of implies that, like, the hazing rituals were very similar to what happened with the alien. In which case, like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Sam and Dean say that they, like, don't really know what's going on, but Dean thinks that the connection... It's just that the professor and the frat guy are both dicks. And then this is when Sam can't find his laptop. Oh, God, it would be so, so funny. Because earlier when he was like, I, like, you know, I'd be able to do this research if I had my laptop. I thought that the only thing that happened to his laptop was that Dane broke it by going to Busty Asian Beauties. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. racism and sexism against Asian women literally murdered Sam's laptop. <laughs> yeah. Sam's laptop is um, a victim of an a Asian, hate An Asian ally. <laughs> Sam's laptop is Asian. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, um, yeah, so Dean's realizing that these, like, he calls them punishments for these people feel, like, like, poetic, like, it seems like justice is being dealt or whatever the fuck. Um, and Sam continues not finding his laptop and getting really mad, and then he, like, goes off. And he says, like, you know something? I put up with a lot from you. And Dean says, like, what are you talking about? I'm a joy to be around. And, yeah, so apparently Dean leaves dirty socks in the sink. Why? Why? Okay, like, I guess, I mean, I, I understand what, th I think the situation is just that he washes his socks in the sink because, like, he, like, only has so many pairs and he needs to reuse them. So, like, the rude thing is, like, not hanging them up somewhere else to dry after you wash them. But... No, I think it's, like... I'm going for a bath, so I'm removing my socks and I'm leaving them here. On the... in the sink? Wait, what about... where, where are the rest know. of his clothes going? Maybe it's a cum sock. No! <laughs> God, you know what? Or maybe motels don't. I don't know. God, like, the first time someone told me about the concept of a cum sock, I literally was like, is this, is this for real? Are you, one, is this a for real thing? And two, you're for real telling me this? Because <laughs> it's so, like, 
Dude, keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I... Okay, wait, I still don't know the logistics of cum socks. Is it that you use it to wipe up after, or that you, like, masturbate the whole time with your dick in the sock? I mean, I'm assuming you clean up after, like, okay. you come inside the sock. That makes more sense. Okay. I was like, that's yeah. a really weird condom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so oh, Dean leaves his dirty socks in the sink and he leaves food in the fridge. Dean asks what's wrong <laughs> with it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not food anymore, Dean. It's Darwinism. It is so, so funny. funny. God. Like, Sam's actually funny you know in this episode, actually, sometimes. <laughs> Literally, Sam is funny one time, and it's in the worst <laughs> episode of the show. Uh, this is what I'm saying. Like, the funny bits of the episode are yeah. funny. It's just... It's... Uh, yeah, but this one is so funny. Yeah. Literally, it's not anymore. food anymore. It's Darwinism. Yeah. No. No, and this is funny to God. me because it came, like, right... Because, like, I was trying to eat breakfast while watching the episode. So I, like, had my cereal. I poured my milk in. And, like, around the time this was happening, I was eating my cereal and I was like, wait, I think this milk is, like, spoiled. <laughs> like, completely spoiled. <laughs> I was like, either this is, like, COVID, like, changing my taste, or, like, I'm, like, like eating rancid milk right now. So, yeah. I, I understand you, Dean. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Um, Dean's all really annoyed about Sam yelling at him. Wait, 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 oh my god, I didn't even notice this. The transcript says that after Sam said it's Darwinism, Dean says, I like it. Dean likes eating moldy food. I am guilty of eating, like, because if it's, like, refrigerated, like, mm -hmm. it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I have eaten, like, food that's been there for a really long time. You know what? What? <laughs> you know what? What? One time, I was, I was, there was like a plate in the fridge. We have a lot of, uh, I'm not gonna spoil what it is, but there's a plate on the fridge and I thought it was corned beef. So like I took a little, I picked up a little bit of it and I put it in my mouth and it was fucking dog food. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that texture is so weird. So I asked my mom, I mean, what's it, what's in the ref? And she was like, which one? And I was like, the, the one in the... Uh, and she was like, that's dog food. Did you eat it? And I was like, no, no, I didn't. No. So, yeah. What? Oh my god. That's so funny. Literally, Dean and me would be a disaster together. We would be out here eating dog food and be like, it's just... Really old corned beef. What an man. interesting texture. <laughs> what an interesting texture. I have, that's one of the. Why did I think while we were talking? Why did I think that like, like either Misha Collins or Greg Succession has eaten dog food? Are either of those things true? No, Greg put like cookies in a doggy bag, <laughs> like a dog poop bag. Oh, so. wait, no. I think I'm thinking about Nicholas Braun's Uber Eats commercial. Is there dog food in there? Maybe so. But also, isn't there, like, a popular post that was, like, cats would eat dog food? Yeah. Wait, I feel like... Did Misha Collins ever... I don't know. I feel like, I feel like some actor person was like, they should stop making, like, dog treats that look like human treats or something. Like... <laughs> So true. I, okay, yeah. I have been excited to reach for a bag of biscuits, only to find out they're, they're bone biscuits, so. Yeah. My mom also cooks these things that's like um, pumpkin and chicken, and like it's mashed together. Uh -huh. <laughs> and at some point I ate some because I thought it was for people, and she was like, why are you eating that? That's for our dogs. <laughs> <laughs> But like 
at least that's yeah, like that's human like food, food, you know. Yeah, that's like, that's like food human that you food. Can eat. I was like, why is this weird chicken squash thing so bland? And she was like, well, because I boiled it for the dogs. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Anyway, yeah, Sam, Sam says that the only thing he asks from Dean is that he doesn't mess with his stuff, which makes me very sad on a Sam bodily autonomy Gadriel level. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, Sam goes like, how would you feel if I screwed with the Impala? And Dean goes like, it'd be the last thing you ever did. Yeah, there's more banter between Bobby telling asking Sam and Dean if, like, Dean actually took the laptop. But basically what happens next is there was a guy in um, in front of the building yet again, and he finds a watch in a sewer grate. Yeah. Also, he looks, like, so excited about this. He looks, like, sexually excited by this. <laughs> <laughs> That's his kink, you know, watches in sewer grates. But he reaches inside and, oh, this guy is like, he does research with animals. He does animal testing. Yeah, and as soon as Sam which mentions is... that, like, Dean goes, yeah, so, like, a dick. Which is weird. Like, like Dean's not a vegan, you know? Like, Dean's well, very well, into one, eating animals. Well, one, like, research scientist that does tests with animals that's not an automatically evil yeah it thing. depends on the nature of the like experiments i think yes but also you do they do die yeah so. you're you're like you can't keep them you have to kill them mm. you have to dispose of the rats well the mice hashtag sorry mice <laughs> but yeah but like even even so like it's just it's so funny to me that dina's like well, he, he touched a uh, mice one, so he must be an evil guy. Right. But yeah, this so guy... Just, Dean's just like not like an animal rights or even animal welfare person, you know? <laughs> like, it's weird. Yeah. Like, is Dean gonna join in PETA next episode, like, while munching on a hamburger? I don't really understand what, like, his stance is here. But yeah, the guy, like, sticks his hand down the sewer... And while he's trying to grab the watch, his hand gets eaten by something that we don't see. But he's screaming and crying and moaning. <laughs> it's like the most low-budget death Supernatural has done so far. Like, we just see his face <laughs> as he screams. <laughs> they literally do not care about this man. Like, <laughs> they literally were like, well, he's dead. He's a dick. Hopefully that that lines up <laughs> but yeah they go to a morgue they open up and they see the body which is literally just an arm yeah so i'm assuming that his arm got eaten and then the rest of his body got eaten and what's left behind was an arm yeah, i think so i don't know what's the logic behind this because i feel like they were like his arm is gonna get eaten and they were like Props department, what do you have? And they're like, we, we can't an have arm. his arm get eaten. We only have an arm. <laughs> so, so like, yeah. It's very confusing. Yeah, it's like, it, like so this alligator ate, bit part of his arm, then crawled out of the sewer and ate the rest of him, but left the arm. The other arm. God. Anyway, they, they open it up and... They're disgusted by it. They look through it and they see uh I think Dean says here that he sees a belly scale. Uh Sam says that he sees a belly scale from an alligator. Sam's so smart. Yeah, a belly scale from an alligator. <coughs> and Dean's like, an alligator in the sewer. And apparently this is a classic urban legend. I've never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, somebody flushes down a baby alligator? Oh, yeah, who the fuck is flushing baby into? alligators down the toilet? Where are you getting these baby alligators to flush down toilets? Yeah. 
I think the fear is like snakes, right? Like a snake will climb up your toilet. I mean, my only fear is like spiders, you know? Because like you like when you kill bugs in the bathroom, you usually flush them like down the toilet. So like, so it's like, what if they survive and they crawl up out while I'm pooping? But yeah, no, I I think there are some snake fears too. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Anyway, they realize that, like, this is a very, like, all the cases have been super, like, urban legendy, like, um, like, very typical of, um, like, legends like this. Mm-hmm. So they go to call Bobby. Anyway, like, Dean goes to his car and the Impala, the Impala tires have been broken. So, Dean is very angry, and he goes around and he sees a money yep. clip, and he picks it up, and apparently it's Sam's. All right, which it's so nice that Sam has a money clip. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, I think I've read like head cannons that like just gave it to him as a gift, which I think makes sense because it's like engraved, like it has his initials on it. Like I don't think Sam would ever get yeah. that for himself. Oh yeah, no. I what I the least realistic thing about this episode is that like a hundred dollars was lying on the ground and Dean found it first. Like s- someone mean? should like not no, no one, one else, else found it and took it. it. What's a hundred dollars? That's oh my god, that's like five k. Because like there were like several yeah. like there was it was like not that thin. There were like probably five twenties in there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no way did that just... Well, but I guess it wasn't real, I guess. Or... Is it real? Did Gabriel make that as an illusion and Sam still has the actual one? Or, like, did Gabriel... No, I like, think he relocated really did take... it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Dean gets into the motel... And he's really mad at Sam, but Sam doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. Uh, he says he didn't go near Dean's car, and Dean goes like, oh yeah, then how did I find this? And uh, Sam realizes that he doesn't have his money clip or his money, and he tells Dean to give it back. Dean says it should be reparations for emotional trauma. He should give us that money. I think we deserve it for watching this episode. (laughs) Uh, yeah. So, okay, so they're, like, arguing, and they're, like, they're arguing pretty close, and Dean looks so short. (laughs) I think... Yeah, because Sam goes, Dean, I have had it up to here with you. And he, like, holds his hand up at, like, his own like, head level, and it's, like, so much higher than the top of Dean's head. (laughs) It's so so funny. Okay, and then they just, they start, like, fighting, like, they, like, they're, like, basically wrestling on the bed to, like, try to get the money clip, and it's so fun. I think I used this clip in an AMV once. It's just, it's a delight to watch. Um, yeah, they're going, like, yeah. get it, get off me, give it back, etc. And then, like, it freezes, and Bobby's like, guys, like, s- shut the fuck up. So, like, this is the part where Bobby is like, you guys are stupid as fuck. Dean would never steal your laptop, and Sam would never damage the Impala. And if you two bothered to actually look into things... You'll realize that this is a clear cut case of a trickster. So, a trickster is a demigod and they create chaos, blah blah blah. And it's so funny, like, when Bobby explains this uh-huh. and it's like, this thing creates chaos and mischief. Like, you can't think straight when he's manipulating things and Sam goes, the laptop. <gasps> and Dean goes, the tires and it's like <laughs> we don't need that confirmation <laughs> we are not stupid as shit bro right yeah also, bobby specifically he says like tricksters can create things out of thin air things as real as you and me 
which I think we so those women... yeah, like those women, like like they're real people. Like you did that. Like you, like that's uh, consent issues. Consent issues. So Bobby says that the mo of the trickster is like going uh, going and punishing the high and mighty. So it makes sense that he's going after assholes. Mm-hmm. Uh. And they mostly look like human. And Dean wonders, and what human do we know who's been at Ground Zero this whole time? Looks at Sam, and Sam figures it out. So, they go to... No, no, no. So, we go to Gabriel's house. At this point, should we continue calling him the trickster? Who cares? Yeah, Everyone knows, knows he's Gabriel. Is. But... Yeah, and so this guy is flipping through, like, a magazine, a tabloid, um, and oh, it's, it's like... Yeah. It's Weekly World News, apparently, which I don't... Is that an actual magazine? No, I don't think so. But uh, it the headlines are like... No, it, it an has a Wikipedia it's... page. It's a tabloid that published, like fake news stories basically that was often Ooh. about like supernatural or paranormal things anyway yeah anyway it's like it it shows you the things that happened around the campus so like alligator alien blah 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 yeah and i mean and... we already like made this point clear but like the fucking headline for the alien story is an alien made me yeah. its love slave and we were supposed to think that that was funny also they put an yeah. apostrophe in the it's like not to be that person but they put an apostrophe in it and it's not supposed anyway back to back to the episode <laughs> yeah Anyway, the janitor stands up, and he's in a very tacky room. Mm. Like, you know, it looks like a porn set. Yeah, and And he's like... He's wearing... He's wearing, like, a tank top and, like, boxer shorts. Yeah, and they're, like, bright red. And there's a dog. Yeah, bright red. There's a dog. The dog hops into his chair. And I love this dog, because... He doesn't know how to jump into the chair. <laughs> like, Gabriel had to pick him up. Which I thought was so cute. This dog is the only good thing about this episode. <laughs> this dog is adorable. But yeah, uh, he puts the dog down. And he goes towards the food table. And he, while he's eating, he goes, um, This is... Uh, something's missing. Yeah. And then two women show up out of thin air and start caressing him and giggling. Yeah. And And he goes, that's better. And... Ugh. Yeah. God! Every single woman in this episode, aside from the woman Sam talks to... Yeah, yeah. The... Yeah. Portrayed in this way, yeah, and it is not. Have we considered that it's not a good look, John Chavan? Yeah, like John Chavan. To have women be portrayed this way is yeah. It's just so weird that he's creating actual people who are real people, and they're just like there to like, like oh yeah. Whatever, whatever. God, it sucks so bad. Like, they're people, but he is making, like, people sex toys, and it's not good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, all the women that he makes, like, they, like, talk and make sounds in a certain way, right? Like, even at the end when, like, the women that he makes, like, die or disappear... They, like, go with, like, a, ah, uh, sound, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so weird. Is that, okay. So, uh, Sam and Dean are back 
at Crawford Hall, I think is the name of the building that Gabriel works at. And, yeah, and he says, like, oh, like, sorry, I'm, like, walking kind of slow. I had quite the night last night. And then he says, lots of sex, if you catch my drift. Okay. All right, dude. Yeah. Um... So, yeah, so Sam says that he forgot something in the truck, so he'll catch up with Dean later, and, uh, Sam starts, like, checking the, like, employee lockers of the building, and, uh, sees that, I guess, Gabriel's been reading Weekly World News with alien abduction headings. Uh, and then outside, Sam and Dean start having an argument where Sam says, like, I saw this, but I don't think that it's, like, hard proof. And we should know that before you go in and stab this guy. And, yeah, and Dean's like, oh, yeah, like, oh, like, you're Mr. Perfect, blah, blah, blah. Like, of course you wouldn't mess up (laughs) with an investigation. Um, and then, so yeah, they're, like, having this argument, and Gabriel's watching them, and then Sam says, like, whatever, just stay here, and I'm gonna go away to his apartment to see if there's anything up there. Yeah, so, Dean is like, okay, whatever, I'm just gonna go inside the building. So, so, so... (laughs) Dean walks in, he hears music over at the distance, he enters this room. It's a theater, and there's like mm-hmm. a bed in the middle, and a disco ball, and yeah. he walks towards the women who are on the bed, two of them. And, <sighs> like, his face is like, ooh, like, you know? He, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay, like, I know they can't show nudity on Supernatural, but I do think it's incredibly unrealistic that Dean would be this horny and distracted by, like, this situation. You know? Like, they're in lingerie, sure, but, like, what? What? I don't know. He's so... <laughs> like, is he that penis delirious? <laughs> what a not head. <laughs> <laughs> no! 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 <laughs> For the uninformed, that's an insult that people in Omega Burst Fix use to insult really horny alpha. <laughs> okay, so, uh, woman is talking to Dean. God, it's so... Oh my god. Like, in the transcript, they're named Brunette and Blonde. <laughs> Jeez. No. Uh, they're, like, saying, like, we've been waiting for you. And they do say it like that. And Dean's like, yeah. you guys are not real. And they're like, the pleasure you're gonna feel is real, though. And, you know, they're saying, like, we'll give you a massage. He says, like, I'm a sucker for a happy ending, but I'll pass. And the Trexor shows up behind him, sitting on one of the theater chairs. And um, he says, like, oh, these women are a peace offering. I know what, is, what you guys have been people? doing. And I've been <sighs> around a while. I've run into your kind before, like, meaning hunters. By the way, this entire time, the shots are of these women's breasts. Yeah. Like, just breasts and then legs, breasts, legs. Cool. It's cool. Just, it's so dehumanizing. Yeah. Well, it's just the idea of, like, there are peace offering, like, 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 the, like, putting these people up as, like, gifts yeah. is... Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, um, Dean is actually pretty chill in front of this guy. He says, like, I can't keep... I can't let you keep hurting people. And the trickster says, 
those people had it coming besides I'm gonna move towns anyway so you can enjoy this while that lasts and Dean says I can't like repeats so I can't let you do that and he says I dig your style all right I mean oh. all the slow dancing alien Dean Dean yeah and the director says it's one of his personal favorites so <laughs> I uh-huh. literally hate this. Let's yeah. let's blast through this scene. Uh uh-huh. Yeah. Uh the trickster says like Sam was right, you shouldn't have come here alone and Dean goes, I didn't. And Sam and Bobby show up. It's so funny to see Bobby <laughs> will they yeah, that way. He just shows up. <laughs> Hilarious. Like uh, Bobby Two is in this episode. <laughs> Bobby Two is in this episode, and it's so funny because the trickster is like, "Wow, the fight you had outside, it was a fake. Could have tricked me." And then he sends a fucking chainsaw man after Sam, <laughs> and I was like, "Are you not gonna send anything towards Bobby? Like Bobby's <laughs> just gonna hang out there?" <laughs> yeah, but. How well Sam is being attacked by Chainsaw Guy. Dean is being... Dean's being slapped around by some women in lingerie, which features in pretty much all of his fantasies, I'm assuming. Yeah. Wait, okay, did you did you notice that part where one of the women, like, hits him, and it sends him careening directly into the other woman's boobs? Ugh. My god. <laughs> like... Like, yeah, like, he falls over, like, burying his face in her cleavage. And meanwhile, the chainsaw sounds are going on, so it literally (laughs) sounds like they're doing, like, a motorboat, like, a motorboating joke there. No. God. God. The first time I learned about the motorboat joke, I said that my cat, when she's burying, sounds like a motorboat. And, like, all Uh my friends made fun of me for it. (laughs) Oh! They were like, what size of bra does your does your cat wear? And I was like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> but yeah, uh, Dean stabs the trickster. Trickster dies. The end. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, and the chainsaw man disappears. Like, he just disappears. Yeah. And the women, like I mentioned, disappear with a ah uh, sound. <laughs> no. <sighs> <sighs> Love that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so they, the fight's over. And Dean has to say again, like, I gotta say, this guy had style. No, he didn't! Shut the yeah, fuck up, so, Dean. Yeah, so, yeah, so Bobby's like, we have to get out before someone finds the corpse. Um, yeah, and then Sam and Dean are, like, stopping, like, on opposite sides of the Impala. And Sam goes like, look, Dean, I just want to say that I'm, uh, and, like, they're looking at each other pretty sincerely, and Dean goes like, hey, me too. I love when people can't apologize. But yeah, I don't know, it is kind of sweet. It's Um, sweet. But also, I wish... It feels undeserved, also. Like, they didn't do anything that bad to each other. Like, it's literally like... Well, again, uh, well, what you said, like, they didn't really do, like, it's established that the trickster was doing all the shit, so I guess they're apologizing for the things they said. Yeah. But, like, none of the problems have been solved. Assuming (laughs) that the things that they said are based on actual grievances that they have against each other, nothing has been solved. Mm. literally I swear to god the moment they drop Bobby off two hours after that they're gonna start (laughs) trying to murder each other again yeah so Uh yeah Bobby makes a joke like you guys are breaking my heart can we just leave so yeah they drive away and then meanwhile inside the theater we see the trickster's dead body and then we see the back of somebody as they walk towards the body and the body disappears and obviously the guy standing over there is Gabriel 
still alive. And he, like, eats some chocolate and smiles. And that's where the episode ends. Boo. Boo. I mean, Gabriel is, like, an interesting character in fandom. Like, we've said earlier, yeah. like, Gabriel. <laughs> Who knows why? <laughs> but, uh, like, also the way, like, in a lot of fics, that's, like, AU, he's, like, the cast sibling, right? Yeah. I find that fascinating. And... I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't, guess there's I more... I don't know why he got so popular. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll like him a lot after Mystery Spot because I'll be like, haha, he killed Dean so much, I don't care about misogyny anymore. <laughs> no, but also, like, he has, you know, like, um, with... The Archangels, he mm-hmm. does have like a closer bond with Cass than any other Archangel. Yeah. Because, like, um, even before they antagonized Raphael, like, Cass and Raphael were more like he was, you know, like he was asking for information type of situation. Mm-hmm. And with Lucifer, obviously, that's <laughs> not a thing. And with Michael, he literally. He literally fucked the Michael sword. Well, he fucked the Michael sword, and also, he... What's the, what's the thing Lucifer said? Did you just molotov my brother with holy fire? Yeah. So, he did that. But, like, when he actually meets Gabriel, it's... They're amicable. It's like they knew each mm-hmm. other. Yeah. And so I get why people would assign Gabriel brother status to Cass. But it's mm. fascinating that that's how it manifests in specifically AU fanfiction. It's either like Anna or Gabe. God, yeah. it's so fucking funny when they have a fic and they have all the archangels there and Lucifer <laughs> is literally named Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> the Novak siblings. Lucifer, Michael, yeah. Raphael, Gabriel... Anna, Jimmy, and Castiel. (laughs) Slay. Slay. The fact that there's just a random guy named Jimmy. Jesus Christ. (laughs) A random guy named Jimmy. God. Love that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, Great. I was going to say great. What did you think of this episode? But yeah, actually, Crystal, what did you think about this episode? Um, Well, me first. Uh Uh-huh. Well, I think... We have spent so much time <laughs> relaying yeah. what we thought of the episode. Um, it's yeah. it's funny when it's funny, and when it's not funny, it's really not funny. Yeah, I second that. There are some iconic moments in here, but they are better on their own. Yeah. <laughs> not being related to this episode. Yeah. Let's proceed to best line, worst line. So what's your best line? There are good lines in this episode. I really love the line. It's not food, Dean. It's Darwinism. Okay, that was It's funny. genuinely so fucking funny. You on can... the same on the same vein, I'm gonna go with it's conjoined twin. <laughs> Come on. Literally it's conjoined twins. Worst line. Oh god. All of them. <laughs> yeah. I think the delivery of the and again and again and again and again. Yeah. And one more time. It's like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. Like the way it was treated by the narrative was very off putting. What's your yeah. worst line? And, hmm. I mean, I think that, yeah, I also really disliked that scene. I think I, I was really off put by Dean's, like, some alien made you his bitch. And I think, but, okay, I think I, it's between that and, like, Gabriel calling the women a peace offering. I feel like both of those lines, I was like, is this actually happening? Yeah. Man. The thing is, I think this episode is going to be highly rated. Yeah, same. How high do you think? I 
feel like I saw it on a list of like highest rated <gasps> supernatural episodes or oh, something. Sucks. I'll give it a. This is so against my perspective. Yeah. But you know what? I'll give it a nine point three. Wow. Okay. I was just gonna go with like a nine flat. Nine flat. Okay. I'll look into it. Oh, it's a nine point. Oh yeah, is it not that high? Oh okay. Okay, we were pretty close. Hell yeah. Uh, not happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. What What do people say about this episode? Absolutely, I do not care about what anyone has to say. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> Funniest episode of the season, masterful comedy, perfection, he's got style. Wait, sorry, the person who Too wrote funny funniest episode words. of the season ends their review with, I know I might tune in just to watch those hot, sexy Winchester boys. <sighs> I mean... They're not, like, I don't think they're particularly attractive in this episode, though, because they're, like, brimming with asshole energy. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be really excited that this is the first Gabriel episode. Yeah. Like, someone just called him the best character of the series. Which, like, what? Have you seen Cass? He's, like, there most of the time. Like, you've heard of Cass, right? Richard Spape Jr. was in Band of Brothers? What is Band of Brothers? It's like a... Um, it's like a war thing. 2001 American War Drama. Miniseries based on historian Stephen A. Ambrose's 1992 nonfiction book of the same name. Created by Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks. What did, what did Richard Spape do in it? He, I cannot imagine this guy, like, in... A military outfit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I guess that's what actors do, right? They act, so. I, I'm trying to think if he yeah. was in, twen- and in also, 91 Whiskey. And also, he fucking directed some of Walker, didn't he? Uh, trying to Ugh. think if he was in 91 Whiskey. I don't think he was. Oh my god, no, not the fucking World War II fic! I read that when I was... When, what age was I? I don't I don't remember, but I remember when I read it, I asked my friend who has n- doesn't know anything about Supernatural yeah. to read it. Because I was like, I remember I was sitting in the floor of the classroom, like at the corner, and I was like, what an experience I just had after finishing this fic. And like that friend like sat beside me and I was like what's going on in your bread uh, in your bread in your brain <laughs> I was going on in your brain and I was like do you want to read like a uh, an extremely long fan fiction it's AU so you don't need to know anything about the show and she was like okay mm-hmm. and she read it and she literally read it in like three days and she was huh. like I cried reading it so yeah I haven't read 91 whiskey I don't I don't think I really read like war AUs cause <laughs> yeah I mean I'm sure you probably you don't anymore either no I don't I, I don't yeah. re- I don't remember why I read this one I think at a time it was like the most I mean I'm sure this is not it couldn't true have been the at the most time it was like the most highly rated at some point and I was like okay no, oh, wait back. wait are you telling me there was a point when like it beat like twist and shout I don't know. But, like, it was... I think I... The, Twist and Shout has major character death, right? And the, there was yeah. a time where I, like, would remove that. Oh, you that, filtered so, it out. Yeah. So, okay. So it was the top after you filtered out major Maybe, character Maybe. But it was, sense. like, it was somewhere there, I guess. Now I don't really scroll through... Like, if you scroll through the hits and, like, the kudos of any thing... I feel like you're gonna stumble across stuff that you would rather not read. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. So I don't do that anymore. What I do is I choose like a a pointed span of time and I go backwards. So right now mm-hmm. I am reading every Destiel fan fiction from January 
well, not reading every, but I'm scrolling through the AO tree from January 1, 2021 to um, June 30, so a couple days ago. Hmm. 2022. So I'm going backwards. Yeah, I think when I was first getting into the fandom, so that was just like watching the confession scene and then going to AO3. Yeah, I think I, I also like did specific spans of time because I wanted to see like what the fan fiction environment was like post November fifth. Yeah. It, it's it's very different, honestly. Because the yeah. last time I was here, as in here reading fan fiction, was like 2016, possibly 2017. So mm -hmm. th that's quite a while ago, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, so is that this? it for this episode of Busty Asian I Beauties? really do want to talk about Night <laughs> One <laughs> Well, we'll do it. We'll do that off air. Yeah. I, by the way, this is not... A, I mean, you can read whatever you want. If you are going to take this as a recommendation, do it. But I would say this is not necessarily a recommendation. But, I mean, mm. if you want to read it, go fucking read it. No, I... Yeah, I don't think I will. The audience, you can do whatever you wish. <laughs> Literally, you can do whatever you wish. So that's it for this episode of Bus Asian Beauties. Next week, we will be discussing... Hold on! I don't know what we'll be discussing. 216 Supernatural. Okay. Man, what a terrible title. What is it? Uh, Roadkill. Hmm. Leave us a rating or review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beautiespodcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. And thanks to everyone who's donated to our Kofi at ko-fi.com slash pod. You can email us any feedback, comments, or inquiries at bustyasianbeautyspod.gmail.com See you guys next time! Bye! <laughs>